Hi, my name is Sabina Hogue, and I will be starting my presentation off with my title. It's called Two Sons. Okay, the story of two sons. The story of two sons can be found in Luke 15, 11 through 32. And I just want to set some context before I read to you the scripture I'd like to read. So we see that there are two sons, and both are working for their father. One comes up to him, the younger son comes up to him and says, Father, I want my inheritance right now. Which is, in Jewish custom, that's very rude because the father was still alive and you only get your inheritance once your father has died. So the father gives him his inheritance. He goes off into a foreign land. We see that he spent it on parties, lavish living, different, like, nice items, nice imports. Famine comes to that new land and he ends up being broke and having to end up working as a servant. He's feeding pigs and he's so hungry because he can't afford to eat that he's eating the food that they're giving to the pigs. And then he has this thought, he has this thought that, well, why don't I go back home? At least at my father's house, they have food. At least at my father's house, if I was a servant, then I would be able to eat. They'd be treated better than this. So he starts off on his journey, and that's where I want to pick back up. So it says in Luke, it says, I will set out and go back to my father. Say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father, but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him, and he was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Right after he says this, the father ends up putting a robe around him, giving him a ring, and he says, go grab me, go grab me a fattened goat or sheep. Let's go, cut it up and let's throw a party because my son has come back. And then we see the older son, the son that was faithfully working in the field, go, what about me? Why did you never throw something for me? You never had a party for me. And the father said, all I had was yours. You could have had a party. And so that, that is the end of the parable. And we commonly refer to it as the prodigal son, but it's actually the story of two sons. So the meaning of the story is you can always come back home that we see that the son that left could always come back to his father's house. And one of the second meanings of the story is if you're a son, act like a son. So we see that the second, we see the second son, when he came back, he was treated as a son. He was loved. And then we see the reject, the, how like, how the rejection of this first one goes. He's like mad. He's rejecting the fact that his brother's home. And that his brother's getting treated better than he was and he was always faithful to his dad. But if you're a son, you had he had access to his father's livestock. He could have had a party, he could have had a feast there. But he chose not to because he didn't truly know that he was a son. He didn't actually own up to that title. And then the third one is both are equal and both are valued. Both sons are equal to the father. Both sons are valued, not based on their works, but based on who they are, that they are his sons. So in our culture that we really commonly see so stuff like don't assume my gender, don't don't tell me who I am. There's actually an article in the New York Times that says male, female, or X, the push for a third choice on official form. So they're actually pushing to have a form that says that I don't identify as either, either of the two the two um, genders. So this gender, this current generation has an identity crisis where we don't truly know who we are and we're pushing the box of sin further and further away. So how far is too far? The prodigals of this generation are going further than they have in the past. And as a church, we need to be accepting as our lost brothers and sisters that we need to not be condemning them like the second, uh, like the first son where we condemn the second son for coming back. We do not deserve the grace that we have all received. We've all received grace that we do not deserve. Healing. The church needs healing in the sense that we are clicky at times. We need to be accepting of those and not inclusive. As prodigals become further and further away from holy standards, we must have more grace and love. And then here at my work, cited she, so we see that we use the Bible, and then there's the article below. But I just want to encourage y'all that as the church, we need to be more accepting, more loving, because prodigals nowadays are further and further away. But that means we need to greet them with way more love than the distance that they've gone. So thank you for watching my presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.